Hey guys, today we're going to uh, learn how to factor uh, quadratic trinomials. So our objective is to be able to take a, a quadratic trinomial and factor it into its binomial factors. Here's what that looks like. Here's a uh, quadratic trinomial, three terms. It's quadratic because the um, highest degree term is uh, a degree two, which is quadratic. This is in a standard form, a descending order. So I have a second degree, I have a first degree, and I have a zero degree or a constant here. This is considered in its polynomial form. It's basically an addition problem. I'm just adding up these three terms. Um, when we factor, we actually convert it from a polynomial form into a factored form. And what a factored form means is these are the two by, uh, binomials that if I multiply together, I get this trinomial. And if I factor, I turn around and get this. So um, we have to be able to go uh, both ways. In, in its essence, this is an addition problem, and this is a multiplication problem. I'm saying this factor, 3x plus 2, times this factor, 4x plus 5. Now, the way we're going to factor, we're going to explore a technique called the Xbox method. And the Xbox method, the Xbox has nothing to do with the game. It really is a memory device to know that that X is a factor diamond that we've used before. And that box is the area model um, that we've used a lot going from a factor form into the polynomial form. So um, let's go ahead and review that binomial multiplication really quickly to uh, make sure that we understand um, all the things that we see here. So we're going to multiply these two binomials and we're going to use, uh, I'm sorry, so we're going to go from a factor form into a polynomial form and we're going to use an area model. So um, if you've been following along, this should be very familiar to you. We take the two binomials, x plus 2 and 2x plus 3. This x plus 2 basically um, uh, tells us the length of this side of a rectangle and more specifically this x tells us the length from here to here. This 2 tells us the length from here to here. Uh, similarly, this 2x tells us the length from here to here. And so looking at this x and this 2x, basically we're saying side times side. And if we want to find the area of this rectangle right here, we just multiply side times side. Now I hope I can, um, uh, I hope you understand this rectangle is not to scale. Okay. So our first little rectangle here, we multiply the side times side, we get 2x squared. And similarly, similarly, rather, if we go along, 2 times 2x is 4x, uh, x times 3 is 3x, and then 2 times 3 is 6. So we have all these little uh, sub areas, and now we want to add up to find the total area. And that total area will give us our polynomial. But do notice that um, we have these monomials of different degrees, and we just can't add up monomials of different degrees. In fact, we have to be very careful and make sure that we add only things that have like terms. So to add is just to combine our like terms. Um, so we have a second degree term, first degree, first degree, and zeroth degree. So the only two we can really add are these two, the 4x and the 3x. Now, if we're going to put this polynomial uh, in a descending order, one thing that always happens is that this will, our quadratic term will always be our leading term and it will be the first term in our polynomial. Also, this six is going to be a constant. This will always be our trailing or our last term because that's a zero degree. Nothing comes below zero, of course. Uh, here, this three X and four X are linear terms. They are like terms. So we can add these and three X plus four X is of course seven X. So we have converted from a factored form into a polynomial form, and that's um, uh, the, the process of multiplying these two factors. Okay, so when we're um, uh, factoring, we're basically reversing that. We're going from the quadratic, and we're converting into its binomial factors. So here is a, the quadratic trinomial in its general form, just for any a, b, and c. So any quadratic coefficient, linear coefficient, and constant, we want to be able to easily convert that into its binomial factors. So again, the Xbox method, the x, really that's our factor diamond, which um, uh, you should know how to use at this point. And the box is our area model. And basically, we're going to use these two tools, and that's all they are, tools, to go from a quadratic trinomial into our binomial factors. Okay, so we do know that this, 
uh, quadratic term, it will always be our leading term. Remember how we, when we went the, um, the other way around? And down here, our trailing term, that always uh, came from here. So we can just think of these as going both ways. So if you know how to multiply and go to here, you should know how to go backwards. Now these two terms here have to add up these two linear terms. We remember we combine like terms to get to that bx. Well, these two things can uh, there's an infinite amount of possibilities, but only one specific possibility exists that makes it factorable. And we find that out by using our factor diamond. Remember our product sum pair, these two integers here are unique. And remember these two integers had to um, represent that if you multiply them together, you get this up here, which was the product. And if you add them together, this was the sum. And that's why we called them the product sum pair. Well, where do these numbers actually come from? Well, in our general form of the quadratic uh, equation, or I'm sorry, the quadratic polynomial, the product is, well, it's the product of our leading coefficient or a quadratic coefficient and our constant. So we multiply those two together and that's where this number comes from. Down here, the sum, well, that comes from our linear coefficient. So that comes from this. So um, once we can kind of go through this process of finding our product sum pair, we then fill them into here and here and we have then filled in our area model and we work backwards to find our binomials that will show up no meals working backward here and here I'll write like that by no meal okay so let's uh, let's let's try a problem okay. uh, please write down the quadratic trinomial 8x squared plus 14x plus 3 again we are going to go now when we factor factoring means we're going from our polynomial form to our factored form um, we are going to use our Xbox method. Again, this is going to be our factor diamond over here in our area model. And we're working backward essentially to find these two things, which are our binomial factors. So the first thing, let's start filling out um, what we know in our area model. And what we do know is our leading and trailing terms are going to go here and here. And our leading term is 8x squared. And our trailing term is 3. So let's go ahead and put those in. And next, we need to find two linear, uh, uh, linear terms that add to 14x. But remember, even though there's an infinite amount of possibilities, only one possibility will make this factorable. And we get that from our product sum uh, uh, pair. So we know that our number up here and our number down here are determined from our form here. So up here, it's going to be a, which is 8 times 3 is 24 so up here will be 24 down here our linear coefficient will be 14 now we have to find two numbers that when we add them together it gets us 14 and when we multiply them together it gets us 24 so fairly simply I hope you would find that that's 2 and 12 now this is our product sum pair. These represent our numbers here and here. It doesn't matter what order, whether you make that 12 and a 2 or a 2 and a 12. We fill these in here. Now that we've got this all filled out, now we just have to figure out what binomials make sense. A really good way to um, look at it is to go this way. Um, for example, take these two monomials and what's the greatest common factor between these two? Well, the greatest common factor that exists in both of these monomials is 4x. How about the greatest common factor between these two going this way? Well, um, actually, there are no common factors except for one. In other words, these two, these two monomials are considered relatively prime. The only common factor they share is one. So that's what we put. Going this way, well, we have a 2x. That's the greatest common factor in these two. And going this way, the greatest common factor is, well, just a 3. Now, before we go ahead and, and um, say for sure that we've got it right, that this is the answer, we want to check to make sure that is true. Oop, let me back up. I'm sorry. I always want to make sure that this is, this is true. And I look here. If this is truly the binomial, then I can go backwards and go, uh, and this is the binomial. I can go 2x, 4x is 8x squared, 3 times 4x is 12x. 2x times 1 is 2x, and 1 times 3 is 3. Yes, check. It works. 
and then I can write down my final answer. Okay. Okay, so uh, why don't you guys try this? Remember, use the Xbox method. Once you've found your two binomials, go back into your area model and check to see if they are correct. Okay, go. Okay, so hopefully you've got the proper um, factored form. And again, it would be really easy to check if you were right just by multiplying those back together to get to here. Okay, um, our leading and trailing terms. Finding our product sum pair. Well, we're going to go 21 times 2 is 42. 13 goes down here. 6 and 7 are our product sum pair. We plug them in here. Our greatest common factors, 3x, greatest common factor, 1, down here. Greatest common factor going this way, 7x, greatest common factor here is 2. Now we want to see if it works. Well, 3x, 7x, yes. 2 times 3x, yes. 7x times 1, yes. 2 times 1, yes. I know it works. It checks. That's our answer. Okay, okay let's try another one. Uh, please write down the problem 2x squared minus 5x minus 12. Uh, please factor it into its binomial factors. Go ahead. Okay. Again, use the Xbox method. Leading, trailing. Uh, we want to find our two linear terms. We use the factor diamond. That's going to, uh, and working backwards, we should be able to get our binomial factors. Okay. Notice that it's negative 5. We have to include the sign with that coefficient. And it's negative 24. In other words, it's 2 times a negative 12. If you've gotten those correct, fairly simply, uh, fairly simple to get our product sum pair, negative 8 and a positive 3. We fill them in here. Go along, greatest common, greatest common, greatest common. Now, when we go greatest common here, because these are both negative, I'm going to take out the negative 4. Okay, now anytime we start dealing with negatives, I definitely want to see if it works. x times 2x, 2x squared, well, that one checks. Uh, negative 4 times 2x, check. 3 times x, check. And negative 4 times 3 is negative 12. It works, it checks. My two factors are x minus 4 and 2x plus 3. Okay. Ah, this one's a little tricky. See if um, how you do on this one. Go ahead. Okay. So going through, finding our binomial factors. Well, leading trailing. Notice I have a negative 11 and a positive 24. My product sum pair. Notice these are both negative. Negative 8 times negative 3 is a positive 24. And negative 8 plus negative 3 is a negative 11. Okay, and that's one of those things you want to remember if you have your products on pair both negative. Okay, so now if I just went straight like we've been doing and going greatest common factor, greatest common factor, well, the only thing they share is one. Greatest common and greatest common. It all looks good, except does it work? Well, let's see. 3x, 4, yes, it works. 2 times 4, what? Nay, that one doesn't work. 3x, whoa, that one doesn't work. But the 1 times 2 does work. Huh. It doesn't work. Well, we've got to be able to do something to make it work. And I'm feeling really good about the numbers. How can I make it so that these are both negative? Well, make those both negative. In fact, uh, um, whenever you have these negatives, and they're both negatives, is my product sum pair, and they'll show up here. What that means is both of the constants in our binomial factors will be negative. Now when, when I check to see if it works, it will. Because, of course, my 12x squared works. Negative 2 times 4x, good. 3x times negative 1, good. And negative 2 times negative 1, it's 2. It works. And my binomials are 4x minus 1 and 3x minus 2. All right, um, hope, uh, hope to see you in class tomorrow.